Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. I'm not going to do my usual spiel that I say at the beginning of most episodes. I'm going to be talking a bit about something a bit more personal, and it relates to my puppy, Boris. Over the past month, I've noticed that his breathing has become a bit different. It's raspy, he's a bit out of breath more, and he tends to hack up his food a bit more while eating. So I took him to the vet, and I found that he has a uh, condition called laryngeal paralysis, which is the first stage of a neurological disease that's similar to ALS in humans. But thankfully, that's slow-moving, and it's not really a concern until well down the road. But what is a concern now is the paralysis, and this is caused when abductor muscles in the larynx are not working properly, and they're not expanding and opening for a deep breath. And so it's not a horrible condition initially, but it does mean that Generally, he would have one to three years left, um, or in some cases, in more extreme cases, dogs only have a few months. So I'm looking to raise some money for his surgery. Uh, it costs $5,000, which is not cheap and well beyond what I can afford. So I've organized a GoFundMe. You don't have to, to donate. If you can even just share it, I would appreciate it. I just would like to get a few extra years with my dog so if uh, you want to donate i will have the gofundme in my show notes the blackfoot were the primary indigenous group that occupied the area that would one day become car stairs long before europeans ever arrived the indigenous would hunt bison in the area harvest supplies trade and move through as they followed the herds and the season the importance of the Carstairs area can be seen in what is now called the Ancient Trail, also known as the Old North Trail or the Wolf Track, which went through the area during the days of the indigenous. Along the creek beds as well in the area, rock formations have been found and they were resting and stopping sites for the indigenous as they moved up and down the corridor depending on the time of year. The first bit of settlement in the area would be Sam Scarlet Ranch, which was located near the Calgary-Edmonton Trail and the Rosebud River. In 1890, when the first telegraph line was built between Calgary and Edmonton, followed soon after by the railroad, employees of the railroad started to live in the area. And before long, settlers started to arrive in large numbers. The train station, little more than a boxcar, was the first building in car stairs and one of the only buildings for a time. Mr. E. W. Stone would become the first citizen and business owner of Carstairs, and three years later, Mr. W. McCrimmon became the first baby born in the community. By 1901, the community was growing rapidly with a new barn, stores, and a school. During the First World War, various organizations organized themselves into the soldiers of the soil and spent the entire spring of 1918 planting every square inch of soil to help the war effort. One example of this was a Red Cross garden plot that was laid down in car stairs. In the town, boys began to work the summer months for the soldiers of the soil. Overall, car stairs was actually heavily involved in the war effort during the First World War. The Canadian Patriotic Fund had a chapter set up in the community, and store owners in the community pledged to donate 5% from all grocery sales and 10% from all other sales to the fund. The community would also host various social gatherings to aid the fund. One Box Social raised $208 or $4,500 today, while an auction of box lunches prepared by Mrs. U. Brown raised $70 for the fund. The United Farmers Association also held a concert which raised $215, and a group of girls created a Valentine's Day dinner raising $170 in the process. All this allowed the raising of $2,156.1917 $2 alone, amounting to $38,500 today. A Mrs. Lucas would also form a chapter of the Ladies Patriotic Society in Carstairs. The first fundraiser for the organization included an auction for a $30 rug with tickets costing 25 cents. The fundraiser allowed the group to order $100 worth of material to be sewn from the Red Cross. The group also sent $25 to the Belgium Relief Fund, 
and a Mrs. King, a local teacher, collected a dollar and sixty cents from her students to give to the organization to buy Christmas presents for the soldiers. In its first year, the chapter of the organization was able to purchase 84 packages of tobacco, six boxes of chocolates, five boxes of gum, and one box of pipes to send to the soldiers. A chapter of the Soldiers' Aid Society in the community was also able to sew 634 articles of clothing, 36 bottle covers, 40 nurse aprons, 22 personal property bags, 178 handkerchiefs, 72 towels, 32 many-tailed bandages, 6 day sheets, 4 pairs of pajamas, 4 bed jackets, 12 surgical caps, and 32 surgical stockings. I want to talk about the Local History Atlas. This was created by one of my listeners, Ben Woodward, and it's fantastic. It's this wonderful website where you can see a, a Google Maps image of Canada, and you can visit all of the places in Canada. And within these places are my local history podcast episodes that you can listen to. And one of the great things about it is you can add to it. You can put your own pictures in. You can put your own information. It's creating this wonderful historical mosaic of Canada. And it's a wonderful website. Uh, I have the link in my show notes. But if you also want to visit yourself, it's atlas.digitalhistory.ca. And we can create this wonderful mosaic of Canada's history. All of us, you can learn about Canada's history. If you're going on a road trip, you can use this wonderful site to see where you're going and the amazing things that you can see. So be sure to check it out. After the war, when Prohibition came into place in Alberta, Cardston found a way around it. In the community, there was something known as bee wine, which was available after the First World War during these Prohibition years. It was made from a packet of white pills called bees, which were placed in a quart sealer, three quarters full of water and a bit of molasses, honey, or prune juice. The pills sank to the bottom, and as they swelled, a bubble began to appear on the pill. The pill then rose to the top where the bubble burst and the pill sank. This process was repeated over and over for three weeks. Once the pills had broken in half, the wine was ready and the pills were strained out. In that same community, there was also the dry squads of police officers that would destroy stills and alcohol when they found them. Often, the alcohol would never be destroyed, but would wind up being sold by members of the dry squad to family members and friends. By the 1920s, Cardston was booming. Wheat crops were averaging 38 bushels per acre, while oats were averaging 70 bushels. In the year 1923 alone, 231 cars of livestock were shipped out of the community. H.C. Beckner, manager of the Carstairs Cooperative Association, stated, quote, I believe that we can handle 90% of the shipping from this district, end quote. Carstairs was also dominating in sports around this time, including winning the Intermediate Hockey Championship of Alberta in 1919. Its baseball team was also doing quite well as well. In 1942, Carstairs decided to help like they had in the previous war. And while money and supplies would go to local organizations to help Canadian soldiers, the community actually set itself apart by helping the Russians as well. The Canadian Aid to Russia Fund were surprised when they received a check from the Carstairs and District Emergency Fund for $750, the largest donation the organization had ever received to that point. That amount of money would be about $13,000 today. John Year of the Carston and District Emergency Fund would state, quote, When the war started, we realized that many demands for worthy causes would be made upon us. Conditions were good, so we stepped out and raised a pool of money, when appeals come up, we make a donation right out of the pool without canvassing, end quote. The organization had also donated $500 to the Queen's Canadian Fund for British Air Raid Victims, $500 to the War Services Campaign, and $200 to the Greek Relief. I'd like to take a break away from the episode for a second to talk about ExploreNet. I spent most of my life living in rural areas in Canada, and I remember the days of dial-up internet and spotty high-speed service. For the past three years, I have been a customer of ExploreNet and I can honestly say that it is the best rural internet I have ever had. My job as a podcaster means I spend a lot of time researching online, interviewing people over Zoom, and uploading content. Through it all, ExploreNet has provided me with excellent service. 
When I'm not working, I enjoy streaming content on several streaming platforms and even doing some online gaming with a friend in Ontario. ExploreNet allows me to do all of that with ease. Right now, they offer up to 50 megabits per second on their new LTE network with unlimited data. Their service has only become faster and better since I first signed on. Today and beyond, ExploreNet is investing in building and upgrading the network at a rapid pace. ExploreNet is rural, and that is their route, and that is their focus. For more information about rural internet options in your area, go to ExploreNet.com or call 1-866-285-2253. In 1950, Carstairs came together to build a new arena for the residents to enjoy. The arena would cost $38,000 to build or about $469,000 today. The amazing thing about this building, which took three years to construct, was that residents were able to pay for it completely in a short period of time. As well, costs were kept down by having 30 volunteers from the community work on the structure under the supervision of a contractor from Calgary. The proposal to build the community arena came along in 1945 and the town council would begin work to get the structure built. In the community you will also find a cairn that is dedicated to Dr. Henry Wise Wood. The cairn was built in 1959 to honour the settler who also served as the president of the United Farmers of Alberta from 1916 to 1931 and the chairman of the Alberta Wheat Pool from 1923 to 1937. The plaque on the cairn states, quote, Philosopher and farm leader, he won from the people he served confidence, esteem, and devotion seldom earned by leaders of men. End quote. Born in Missouri, Wood received his education at Christian University at Canton, Missouri. He would then go into farming, and in 1905, Wood had come to Canada to start a new life in the Carstairs area where he began a farm. He would say of Alberta, quote, I think Alberta, my adopted province, is the finest in the world. Western Canada is one of the richest areas in the world. End quote. He would be offered the post of Premier of Alberta in 1921, but he turned it down so he could continue farming. He would pass away on June 10, 1941. In 1951, he was inducted into the Alberta Agricultural Hall of Fame, and his portrait hangs in the legislature in Edmonton. By 1960, the growth and prosperity of Carstairs was assured thanks to the construction of a $3.7 million gas processing plant. Over 200 people came out to see the structure opened, and at full capacity, it would provide 50 million cubic feet of gas per day to the Alberta Gas Trunk Line Company. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the history of Carstairs, then you should check out the Carstairs Heritage Centre. The goal of the centre and museum is to collect, preserve, record, and interpret objects and materials relevant to the history of the area, from the years of the Indigenous to the present day. Not only a museum, it also serves as the community's visitor information centre. The Carstairs and District Historical Society itself was formed in 1986 with the goal of turning the Knox Presbyterian Church into a community museum. Over time, that goal was achieved as the church is now home to art exhibits, local history exhibits, a temporary exhibition place, and a multi-purpose place. Also on the grounds, you will find three carriage houses with displays, the McKaig Homesteader House, and the historic gardens of the museum. I hope you enjoyed that episode and my look at car stairs. If you did, please leave a rating and review. If you like, you can email me at craig at canadaehx.com. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D, and I'm on Instagram at Bairdo37. As well, again, if you want to support the podcast, you can for as little as $3 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. And you can donate to the podcast by going to CanadaEHX.com and clicking donate. And I also want to thank all of my wonderful patrons. And I apologize if I get any names incorrect. Sarah White, Tom McMillan, Mike Sullivan, Wendy Mills, Keelan Pringnitz, Michael Matthews, Joanna Parker, Jeff Dahl, Vobbs, Robert Page, Richard T., Colin Johnson, Jeff Hershey, Kyle Murray, Steve Pakin, Matthew Gartho, Lionel Romaine, Dr. Bob Turner, Randy Hayden, Doug Campbell, Reg W., Deborah Carlson, Francis Helbling, Nixon Ree, Shannon Marshall, Clinton Martinez, Dimitri Chauve, Aaron O'Hara Myers, Robert Dunseith, Todd Casey, Catherine Roy, Luke S., JP Bear, Jason Hall, Phil Maynard, 
and Iris Gray. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.